overpacking can be a real problem. You might be paying extra money to check that luggage in with the increased risk of getting it lost and you're lugging all that extra stuff back and forth to come home with a lot of it being unworn anyway. Today, I'm gonna share the tips that have worked for me over several years now so that I now avoid all those extra hassles just by packing smartly and getting it down to only taking carry-ons. If I can go from being a big time overpacker like I used to be in the past, you can do this too. The first rule we always follow is to wear your bulkiest items on the plane. Wear those jeans, wear the bulkier sneakers, wear a sweatshirt with a jacket over it. Because even if you're not gonna wear both of those the whole time on the plane, you could just put that jacket over your lap and it's not costing you space in your luggage and it's not costing you extra money to do that. The next thing that we need to mentally let go of is needing or wanting to take all those brand new pieces that you just bought to go on vacation that each require like three, four different pieces to make each outfit. I know what you're thinking. That's way too hard because part of the fun experience of getting ready for vacation is going out shopping for all the cute clothes that you can see yourself wearing at the pool, wearing at the beach and out to dinner. And you want to include those when you pack. But the thing is, if you wanna pack lightly, you have to think functionality. What are things I can take that will kind of cross together? Tops that can go with a couple of different bottoms. Bottoms that can be worn with several tops. Save all of those new, cute, multi-piece outfits for events and things that you have coming up that are gonna be closer to home for you. Number three, now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of how many of each kind of item to pack. But to keep things simple, let's say you have to pack for a seven day trip. So we're gonna need seven outfits, right? Well, number one, on day one and the day I come home, I'm wearing the same travel outfit. It includes my tennis shoes, my jeans, let's say, maybe a sweatshirt and a jacket. And you might be thinking, okay, but if I'm going somewhere warm from a cold place, that makes sense to me. But if I'm now coming back from the warm place, I don't wanna wear all those warm clothes. I'm gonna be dying in the heat. Here's what you do. Put a t-shirt on with the jeans and your, and your sneakers, and then carry your sweatshirt and your jacket. And you might even need one of those at least on the plane when it gets a little bit cool but now you've kind of lightened up that outfit when you're in the warmer climate to come home. Now we're down to needing five outfits. Now we're gonna add a few extras and we'll have room for it because you know you're gonna have your pool outfits, your swimsuits, and you know you might need other outfits for day versus going out to dinner at night. So we're gonna have that covered as well. So when we're planning these next five outfits, we're looking at which items in my closet are the most versatile, which items in my closet can I switch around and kind of make a capsule wardrobe out of for that week? And which items can I pack that I'm gonna be able to get multiple uses out of them because they're more transitional colors and pieces. So even when I'm planning my outfits for each week when I'm at home, we're gonna start with the bottoms because when you look at the weather at wherever you're going on your trip, that will kind of dictate the outfits that you're gonna be wearing throughout the day. So I always like to start with the bottoms and then I can either lighten up with the tops or layer on the tops if need be. So come on with me and let's pack for this vacation. So I have picked out two pair of shorts, one skirt, and actually we're gonna incorporate the skirt that I'm wearing, one dress, and then one pair of pants. And what I did is I boiled it down to taking two pair of shoes that are gonna work really with everything. One pair of kind of cool looking sneakers and one pair of sandals. So two to three pair of shoes. And what you wanna make sure is that the shoes will really go with each outfit that you're putting together so that you don't have to take more than that. The next thing we're gonna do I'm gonna try all these on for you so that you can see the different outfits I would wear during the day and at night. Then we're gonna pack everything up so that you can see that all of this stuff is gonna fit just in my carry-on.
So do you see how already I pick three casual bottoms? And what I do is I rotate the bottom. So white shorts on one day, the jean shorts the next day, the skirt the next day. Then I start over and I'm rotating tops with them, making two outfits with each bottom. That completes your six casual outfits for the whole week. So now let's move on to the evening wear. And just a caveat here, when we go on a cruise or we go out on a vacation somewhere, we don't get real fancy. This is for the average person who is going out, they wanna look nice for dinner, but they don't need to wear a different formal evening gown every night. Now the secret to this evening wear situation, you pack one dress that's kind of got a classic look and color and you can put different accessories with it to make it look a little bit different. A layering piece is always a great idea because you know some of those restaurants, depending on where you go, can still be really cool. So you saw me wear the white dress once, the score once, and then this goes in the middle. Now let's do it again, but make it look a little bit different. Sometimes just by changing the belt makes it look a little bit different. Now here's the thing, no one on your trip, okay, is gonna say, you know, she wore that dress three nights ago. Okay, I have it right here logged in my journal. So we have to get over the thinking that people are gonna see us and be like, oh, she already wore that, ooh. I still feel pretty. I still created a little bit of a different outfit and I wore this three nights ago. So no one is really gonna remember. And it served two purposes for two dinners on my vacation. So now that we've done our casual day, our evening wear, let me show you what my travel day outfit looks like. So you can kind of see what I've put together for both of those travel days. Save your layering pieces until the very end going into your luggage and kind of see, do I have a little extra room where I'd like to wear the lighter cardigan instead of this. But one of the most important things as we're packing all of this up is not just to throw it in your suitcase. I have learned over time that if I roll my items in the suitcase, it's gonna save me a lot of space. I know some of you like packing cubes and if you like the packing cubes and they work for you, stick with that. Just do what works best for you. while I'm packing this. I am not gonna waste space in my luggage with a blow dryer because you know that most hotels or even cruise ships have a blow dryer for you to use. So this is the only hair tool I always take with me. Now you saw me put three swimsuits in there. I feel like that's all you need, ladies, come on. I know you wanna take one for every day, but you don't need that. You wear each one two times and you that's pretty much your trip. And the last thing to pack is the PJs. Now I only take two PJ sets because honestly, what are you doing besides sleeping in your PJs that they're getting so dirty? <laughs> Do you see this so far? We took all those clothes and I still have room left over for a few more things. Now, by the way, the suitcase that I have that I pack 
I've had it for probably three or four years, came from Walmart. If I can still find the suitcase online there still, I'm gonna post it for you down below in the description box. It has been a great suitcase. I have gone to Europe in that, on cruises, road trips, other air travel with the suitcase, never a problem. No breaking, no scratching, no wheel problems, nothing. Now besides my carry-on that we've packed already, the only thing I take with me is a personal item. Can you believe that this sucker is considered a personal item? It fits right under the seat in front of you. I've traveled with this a few times now, never had a problem on different airlines. Between the carry-on suitcase and this, you should have plenty of room for a week. I found this bag while I was snooping on Amazon, watching other people's videos about what type of bags are really good that you could really pack a lot in there to go under a seat. And I ended up finding this bag. Let me show you how much room this bag has because you're gonna be amazed. So first of all, in the back, it has this whole trolley slip area so that it will fit on your carry-on luggage. It does have a zippered pocket in the front here. Then in this pocket, it has got a nice wide area in there. In the front, you've got this compartment here with all kinds of little strapped areas. You can put uh, your phone back here. Now on the inside, so over here, it's got one large area that opens up, you, I've put shoes in here before, toiletries, and these two things right here, you get in it from right here. You've got two separate pockets. I put my makeup bag in there before, um, cords for my computer, my phone, things like that can go in one of these. And on this side, you've got padded areas to put a computer, maybe notepads, magazines, books, things like that. And it Velcro's shut so that that way everything stays in place. And the zipper here opens up to this big compartment here. I've even put an outfit, a full on outfit to wear in this. If you wanna get around paying for your carry-on luggage, let's say on Spirit or some of the other less expensive airlines, this qualifies for a personal item. Nobody said boo about the size of this bag. 